Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Paula's Kitchen. This is now episode two of season two, and I'm really excited to share the recipe that we're going to be making today, near and dear to my heart. This cookbook called A Taste of Ohio History was gifted to me by a dear friend of ours over in California, Austin, and he knows I'm originally from Ohio, knows I love to cook, so it's a perfect match. And I selected a recipe out of here uh, that we are just gonna love, apple dumpling cake, never made it before, so let's make it together. Let me tell you about Austin for a minute. He is 20 years old, just such a gifted young man. He is an artist, he writes children's books, and we're gonna leave a link in our description box so you can look at Austin's work. All right, guys, let's talk ingredients for our apple dumpling cake. First of all, of course, we've got a variety of apples, and I love mixing apples when I'm baking. So I've got some Galas, I've got some Fuji, and I always love to do a Granny Smith because I'm all about tart apples. Um, we are, of course, going to use flour and sugar, oil and eggs. We are going to put walnuts in the cake. We're going to flavor it with vanilla and cinnamon, salt and soda. And then we are going to pour a glaze into it, which I'm really kind of excited about, made of brown sugar, butter and milk. So uh, it's going to be a fun method to put this together and uh, it goes in a bunt pan. So it's also going to be beautiful in terms of presentation. Let's make cake. We're in our work area. This should be familiar to you guys by now. We are going to measure out some dry ingredients for the cake and set those aside. I have already done three cups of all-purpose flour and I need to add three additional ingredients to it. First of all, I need a teaspoon of baking soda. So I will measure out my soda. I need a teaspoon of salt. Let me just Set that aside so I don't pour too much in my mixing bowl. Alrighty, and then I also need a teaspoon of cinnamon. I always keep the paper on the cinnamon just to keep it a little bit fresher. Alright, those are my dries. Pretty easy and quick on that. I'm going to give that flour mixture a quick stir and then we're just going to set that aside. And then I'm going to chop up some apples and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what this cookbook is and why it's so unique and kind of wonderful. I, I just received it a couple of weeks ago and I have just been so much enjoying it. All right, let me set up. We're going to chop some apples. Be right with you. Let me tell you about this book for a minute. The concept of the book is that it contains about a hundred different locations in and around Ohio that are historic, that either always were restaurants or were converted into restaurants. We're talking taverns and inns and mills and all these just wonderful old historic spots all over the state. And what I've chosen to make today out of this lovely gifted book is from the Peerless Mill Inn in Miamisburg, Ohio. It was actually a lumber mill along the banks of the Miami Erie Canal. So just really excited about making this historic dish from a historic place. We were looking for a picture of the Peerless Mill Inn and learned that this historic building, which began life as a sawmill in 1828 and became a restaurant a century later, fell victim to a tragic fire in 2003, two years after the cookbook was published. So what we are going to need is three cups of apples that are diced but not peeled. So what I did was wash the apples. Of course, I took the tags off of them. And I'm going to do my Granny Smith first. And uh, I have a little garbage bowl here to capture the centers. Um, the reason I do the Granny Smith, like I said, I'm just a big fan of tart apples. And using these just reminds me of really good times when we used to go visit Dale's parents at their home up in Canada, my father-in-law absolutely loved Northern Spy 
apples and we would always have apple pie made out of northern spice. We can't get those here. So the next best thing, just to carry on the tradition, is for me to throw in a Granny Smith. So just going to put them in a dice here and cut these up. And after I get a big pile, I'll measure and see how close I get to three cups. Because <laughs> that's what I'm aiming for here is three cups. All right, you guys, continuing on. Chop, chop, chop. I've got one of each apple here in my bowl, and I've stirred them together so that when I measure out three cups, I have a nice mix of the three different kinds of apples. And I, I think I might be close. I've got my Pyrex glass here. We'll measure here in a minute. Let's see. Thing about apples, it's not something you can do ahead because of course they're gonna turn brown if I let them sit. All right, stir, stir, stir. Let me pull over a two cup measure. Get two cups going. It's actually a little more than two cups. And then here's my one cup measure. I think I might have it. So this is about three good size apples. A couple of them hit the floor. <laughs> That's all right. If we had a dog, that would be good. All right, you guys, three cups of apples chopped. Now, the other thing that's going in the cake that I absolutely love, of course, is nuts. And we need a cup. You guys have seen before, of course, my old-fashioned nut chopper. These are walnuts, and I need a cup. So again, I... It just uh, so we wouldn't have one of those mishaps where, you know, the walnut chopper goes all over the floor. I actually did this off camera, <laughs> protecting myself. So we have a cup of nuts and we are ready to go with that. All right, ingredients assembled. Time to start making a cake. Time to turn the oven on and I'm gonna need it to be 350 for our cake. So the oven's on, I'll get that preheating and I'm gonna get set up to do mixing. I will see you in just a second. We are ready to actually start to put the cake together. No mixer required. It's gonna be hand mixing all the way through. So the first thing I need to do is a cup and a half of oil. I'm actually using canola oil, but any kind of vegetable oil that you have. So there's my cup and a half. Put that in my great big mixing bowl. Next up, I need two cups of sugar that I measured out a little bit ago. All right, and then I'm gonna add three eggs to my sugar and oil mixture. This is a whole lot easier to do than butter. <laughs> Oftentimes when you make a cake or a cookie, you have to use a beater to mix the sugar and butter together, but oil is a whole lot easier, that's for sure. Doesn't say to do them one at a time, but I will. And we'll add in number three. Whoops, <laughs> it wouldn't be me if I didn't drop an eggshell. Right, cameraman? That's right. <laughs> Not the first time I've done that. <laughs> I just don't want to drop anything on the cookbook. <laughs> All right, I will give this a brisk stir before I go on. At this point, I'm going to add two teaspoons of vanilla. One, and two. 
All right, that is it on our liquid ingredients. So I'm just going to give this a stir, and then we're going to fold in the flour mixture that we prepared earlier. This is kind of a stir mix combined thing. Not very difficult. I uh, pre greased my uh, bundt pan earlier so it's ready for the cake batter. Once we are ready, let me start getting some of that flour in there. I tend to always do the flour, the dry ingredients in thirds when I make a batter. It tends to work for me. Been a little while since we did a Paula's Kitchen. We took, we did 12 episodes in season one and uh, took a little break during the hot, hot, hot weather. It is still with us, even now in September, believe it or not. But we were anxious to get going and we definitely want to do some terrific recipes all the way through the holiday season. Coming up, I have received recipes and requests from some lovely people and we're going to be doing fun things in future episodes like pizza salad and Russian cheesecake. All right, my third pour of the flour and I'm just going to get this batter well incorporated and then we're going to fold in the apples and the walnuts. Uh, the reason I chose this recipe specifically, oh my, my oven's ready, is September is fresh apple season, certainly around here. My grandpa grew apples. Yes, he had a wonderful orchard that I had the privilege of visiting before the orchard went away. <laughs> yeah, he was a great guy. He was a great guy. George McKenzie, what a guy. In fact, I have one of his apple crates here in the house. Maybe we'll insert a little snapshot I, not of that only apple right here. Crate, but I also have the holder that they used to the pick basket, them, the basket, the apple basket. Put them in, yeah. We have both. Yep. Talk about historic. We are happy to have them. I just uh, set my area up to do the next couple steps here. I've got my bunt pan standing by. Like I said, I already greased it, or you can spray it with Pam, whatever works for you. I am going to pour my three cups of mixed diced apples into my cake batter for a sec and my cup of walnuts and let's hope that I've got a strong arm because this is going to take a bit of mixing look at the thickness of this cake batter all right this goes in the bundt pan and bakes for one hour at 350 so, let's pull that bun pan over here. Let's see if I can get this poured. It is, I can't tell you how heavy this is. I'm going to try to do it for the camera as best I can. But I might have to resort to doing it in a way that's more comfortable for me. We'll see. It's a... Uh, Really just kind of a little bit of dough holding a whole lot of apples together. You know what? I'm all about it. What do you think, Dale? I like it. <laughs> I like it too. <laughs> all right. I have to resort to doing it a little bit easier for me. So maybe not so good on camera angles, but needs must. We'll leave that to our infamous editor, right? Yeah, he's very angry at her. <laughs> <laughs> he gets very frustrated at Paula's. Yeah, he is. He's very frustrated at Paula's kitchen because it's quite challenging. Lighting, sound. And you don't know what I'm going to I do don't next. Know what she's going to be. Yeah, it's challenging. This is ready for the oven. Let me wipe my yucky hands off. Plop this in. 350 degrees for an hour. Oh, that's so heavy. It's, uh, I can't even imagine now this glaze that we're going to do. We'll do that during the hour because it has to be poured on the hot cake as soon as it comes out of the oven. So I'm going to take a little breather and we'll be back with it to create that glaze. Okay, folks, we are 10 minutes away from my timer going off. 
with my one hour bake and we are going nuts with the apple cinnamon sugar smell in this house. All right, I'm gonna make this glaze because as I said earlier, it's gotta go on the cake as soon as it comes out of the oven. Glaze has three simple ingredients. It has a stick of very soft butter. It has one cup of brown sugar and it has a quarter cup of milk and that is it. So let me get my brown sugar in there. And I'm going to cream this just by hand, the butter and the brown sugar. And you know what? That's why I keep this towel handy because actually it acts to hold my bowl in place as I'm stirring. The cake, as we saw before we put it into the pan, was quite a thick and dry uh, cake batter. So I know this is going to moisten it and but you don't actually put this glaze on the top you pour it into the cake so it soaks in so i'm very intrigued by that all right let me pour my quarter cup of milk in there and stir this some more and it's going to thin it a little bit so i'm able to pour it onto the cake all right I'm going to set this aside and I'll be right back with you when my timer goes off. All right, friends, it's just been about an hour and I did poke a toothpick in the cake once or twice just to make sure in the cracks that it was getting done. So let me pull it out of the oven. Check that out. Wow. That's amazing looking. And turn the oven off. Yay! <laughs> All right, as instructed, the very last step in our apple dumpling cake is to take this brown sugar butter mixture and put it on the cake immediately to soak in. So I'm going to do that. Look at this. All right, do you hear it sizzling? Oh, I do. Yeah. Oh, it's melting. It's melting. Mm hmm. Future Paula here. The recipe says that you could make this in a bun pan or in a sheet cake pan, a 13 by 9. Let me recommend the 13 by 9. That way you won't have this spillover that I had and you'll be able to serve it in squares, which I highly recommend. I regret oh not gosh. putting this oh. on a platter. <laughs> oh, look at this mess. Note to you guys, if you make this Put it on a cookie sheet or a platter before you do the last step. <laughs> All right, seriously, jazzed and excited about this. All right, it has to sit for 90 minutes, an hour and a half. I think it's melting. It's supposed to. Um, it's supposed to sit for 90 minutes, an hour and a half before we invert it and take it out of the pan. So we are going to take a breather while that happens and uh, let it cool down completely and then we will slice the cake and taste it. What do you think? This is so fun. <laughs> Thank you, Austin, for making a really fun day for us with this wonderful cookbook. Alrighty, you guys, so this is how the cake looks when it is sliced. It is incredibly moist and full of apple chunks. Um, I am very intrigued. It's like the icing is inside the cake so <laughs> this I'm... is several hours later now yeah, yeah they say to let it sit for at least an hour and a half yeah. and it's actually been probably twice that wait a minute so... Don't... wait let's do it together all right how about that you ready Taking a bite one two oh it's seriously delicious oh my god <laughs> that's really good <laughs> I got a little dismayed by pouring, taking it out of the bunt pan because it didn't come out very pretty, but in fact, it's incredibly delicious. Wow, this is... I wish I had a cup of tea <laughs> to go with it. Oh. I think I'm having this for breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> this is terrific. It's, um, it's from the Peerless Mill Inn in Miamisburg, Ohio. This is one of their signature recipes, apple dumpling cake. It's... Gee, it's delicious. great, <laughs> and it, it's actually nighttime here. We waited several hours. Yeah, it's we did uh, this. it is evening, and uh, so we decided to save it for an after dinner treat for ourselves. And um, wow, 
It's really delicious. <laughs> Try this one. I think you're going to like it. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It wasn't hard to make. And honestly, it's uh, incredibly delicious. Very autumn-y in terms of flavors. Just apples, cinnamon, brown sugar. How could you go wrong? Yeah. Can't beat it. <laughs> if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification button. Anything else about this one, Paul? No. Thank you so much for being with us on episode two. And we look forward to sharing more of your requests in the weeks to come. Hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. everybody. Bye.